Thank God for her gift. We thank God for the blessing that she is. And she's a blessing in many places. It says in the bulletin that she's the director of Sacred Arts at <clears throat> the um, uh, St. Paul yeah. Community Baptist Church. And the funny thing about it is that I was at St. Paul working with my Alpha for like almost four years. And behind me came Cherub doing such a wonderful and amazing job with that worship ministry there. Um, and so I just it's just amazing just to see how God moves. Yeah, and so I'm thankful for her being here. I'm thankful for her witness. Um, she's taught me a lot in times when I needed to learn. So um, I'm going to talk about her for a minute because <laughs> I get a chance to, amen. Um, and so I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Um, I'm thankful for every guest that's in the house today. Amen. There's a lot of people here that are dear to my heart. That are dear to my heart. Um, and so incoming, uh, we have minister in training, uh, uh, Marie, who told me first, she was the first person to say, I'll be there. And she is here. Um, Elder Tish Brown is here from St. Mark Holy Church. And Carol Randall is on her way to the bathroom or taking a telephone call. Amen. Amen. But it is time for the centering moment, or as my my first pastoral father would say, the time for preach talk. Dr. Braxton in, in Baltimore was the reason that I would probably be standing here because I felt somewhat that I had something to offer into the place of ministry um, as a preacher. So if you don't mind, I just want to go to the throne of grace for a moment before we partake in what God has given me to share with you. Father God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for this sacred space that you call El Pita. Now, God, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we won't be able to contain, Father God, so much that it spills over from us, God, to other people and from other people to other people and other people to other people. So that the name of this church and this great mission, Father God, would go forth. But that paramountly your name would be able to be heard and be felt in all the places. Because people will be walking around talking about what could I do to be saved and what can I do to know more about about this Jesus that we talk about. God, we ask that you would bless the preacher in Jesus' name. Bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Anoint him afresh for this moment, God, because you have brought him a long way and you've brought him to this place. Now as he stands behind the sacred desk, oh God, help him to navigate that which you have put on his heart. Father God, help him not to lean only to what he's written down, God, but help him, Father God, to speak from the place of anointing that you have given him. God, in Jesus' name, we give you glory. In your name, we give you praise. And God, we thank you for it is done in your name. Amen. 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 There's a song that I learned as a teenager. And I'm not going to sing the whole thing. I'm just going to sing a part of it because um, the Spirit is telling me that I should sing it. It's a B.B. Wanin song, and it's a song that I would sing as a teenager because I didn't quite understand this thing called love. And I realized that I thought that I had had points when I was in it, but I wasn't necessarily. So the song just says, searching for love. Has anyone found? See, everyone knows that love is a feeling. It's more, it's real. So let my record show and everyone here know that it's real. Searching for love, some search for a lifetime. It hurts and I know to look for and don't find. Can't smile until 
till my record shows and everyone here knows that it's real go home it's bb wadens bb wadens and kirk franklin helped me to write this sermon because bb wadens says and i'm already off of what the manuscript says so bb wadens says searching for love in the 80s and kirk franklin comes back in the early 90s and says, what does it really mean to love? He says, love a word that comes and goes, but few people really know what it means to really love somebody. Yeah. Love, there may be tears and they fade away, but I'm glad your love, oh God, that your love has stayed because I love you and you showed me, Jesus, what it really means to love. From the beginning of time, love has been a part of what helps us to relate to one another. The love of God created a world that would reverence him as creator just as much as that love has existed from the very balance of time. The very perversion of the same thing has also existed. Because what God meant for good, the enemy turned around and made it something that could hurt us if we're not careful. So many things written about love. Poems, songs, plays, soap operas, books. It's a subject that everyone has an opinion on. But yet and still, some and for some and for many seems unattainable. Everyone needs it, but people don't know how to maintain it. There are myriads of people today that would have made today Single Awareness Day because they feel that no one loves them romantically. So they close off all possibilities and recluse. This year, for all the people who celebrate Jesus as their Valentine on today, we say it is well, it is well. It is well. because today is about God's greatest gift. Amen. At the heart of Valentine's Day lies a theme that everyone at some point needs someone to recognize them for who they are. Someone that gets them and accepts them for who they are, even when there's a, they are a far cry from who they were when we first met them. The dynamics of each relationship changes over time and some for the better and some for the worse. But in each regard, there are people who have taken time and invested finances and made sacrifices to show just how much they love one another. As I said before, well-noted gospel writer and recording artist Kirk Franklin surmised that love was popular as, his song was popular, and it says what it really means to love. But love, the word that has many forms and kinds, at the very existence of all our lives, we want to experience this love. I'm a hopeless romantic, and in my life, I've had a good experience with love, and I've had bad experiences with love. And I have to move a little bit. What I realized is that in the last 19 years, I have harbored the hardest feelings for love because it was because of love lost that I went on a crazy tirade looking for something that I could not find without the direction of God. This week I realized that the only reason why I'm walking around as positive as I am is because 19 years ago somebody cheated on me, cheated on me with my God brother. And I'm being real now, so I'm gonna step away yeah. from it, okay? Is that alright? Step around with my God brother and the person that I loved 
who gave me the best Valentine's Day of my life in 1996. Slept with somebody who I loved. And it made me go crazy mad. It put me in a position where now I love somebody and I love somebody who's my friend and I love somebody who is my lover. And now I have to figure out what to do with all of these feelings, this love that I have with inside myself. So I decided to take it to the streets, if you will. A very personal story that I can tell you about myself, and a lot of people don't know it. I slept around from house to house, and I slept anywhere where somebody would open up the door and give me what it was that I needed. Because I was trying <laughs> to figure out how to deal with the pain of love that is broken. How do you deal with broken love? How do you deal when you feel that there's no love in your life any longer? And so I realized and I had to talk to the person finally. Um, I was able to finally tell the person. Uh, um, we talked about the different types of love, the filio, and we talked about the storge, and we talked about the agape. And I finally had to get past my agape love with this person to get to a storge love with them and let them know, you hurt me 19 years ago. You put me in a bad position, a bad disposition. But I love you enough to tell you, this is what I was going through. It's not going to happen no more. I'm not going to be with you again. But I love you. Amen. And I thank you for what you have taught me in the time. One thing I realized about that love that was broken is that when it was broken, I was looking for ways to fix it with something else. But what I did not do was consult God about what God wanted for me and who God sent for me to love me. So I've been on a journey for 19 years to, number one, love myself above all others and then to love God as much as I love myself. Because he is the creator of all things. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so this week I picked up a book by the by an author by the name of Gary Chapman. I don't know how many are familiar with Gary Chapman's yes. book mm -hmm. called The Five Love Languages yes. for a Lasting Love Relationship. Mm -hmm. And as I read this book, I quickly understood that it was a book that was steeped in relationship therapy for couples. <laughs> but I quickly realized that this book, <clears throat> I was reading it for myself. And then I was also reading it because it was going to shed some light on the languages that we use to love God. What do you say, Reverend Ken? Well... I'm glad you asked. As I looked at the five love languages, I became totally engrossed in wondering. What would I do to show God my love? When I looked at what these languages were, I also took a test for what I needed and realized that God uses five love languages. And we might not know what they are, but I'm going to tell you what they are. They're words of affirmation. Quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Amen? I'll say it again. Uh, words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. The words of affirmation... Uh, go a little something like this. Actions don't always speak louder than words. Actions don't always speak louder than words. And if this is your love language, unsolicited comments or compliments mean the world to you. Hearing the words, I love you, are important. Hearing the reasons behind that love sends your spirit skyward. Insults can leave you shattered and not easily forgotten. Quality time. In the vernacular of quality time... 
Nothing says I love you like full, undivided attention.